Okay, so uh, this is our short, short section called Since You Love Martin Bar, PVPC Nangti Kualinzi, Making Sense of Tibetan Text Without Using a Dictionary. I, I just like try to make this thing because like uh, from my own experience and many students, so too much rely on the online dictionary. Because if you rely too much online dictionary, number one, it really slow down to improve your language. And number two, also give a lot of wrong information. And number three, and you feel like, uh, oh, there's like no way to, I can reach higher level. So that's kind of thing, I think it's like a really big mistake. Of course, we have to use the dictionary, but not too much. So, and also when you try to translate the text, not word by word, we should translate phrase by phrase. Then you get a correct meaning. If you translate the word by word, lots of things wrong meaning. Here, example, Rick. So if you look at the online dictionary, Rick has many different meaning. Like, uh, so first line, Satya Penditani, Dimi Kunjurisu Kutrung. And this Rick's talking about family language. Satya Penditani was born in the Korean family language. Mm -hmm. Second one, Jagala Neriji Kange Teba. Oh, Jagar Neri Jigang Teba means India facing the type of illness. He's talking mm -hmm. about this type, kind. Mm -hmm. And third one, Riglamdang Nangchik Yulopti Saba. So basically saying new book of Buddha Dhamma and logic text. So this here, Riglam's logic. So when I see, look at the Rig family lineage, type of kind, logic. So that's what like a different meaning. Same thing, karma, ne, lots of things. So we just like a thing. So how we know without like looking dictionary, like makes sense. So like for us from this text, we have this, this is very long. Like Sanjay Jomden De Ki, one word of a San Jene, Long Naju Chimbe Jesu, Yebe Kup, Jaku Pombe Rila, Jambe Yang Dang, Sherry Pula Sobe, Hami Kor, Yata Bad Mebar, Pembe Chedo, Sabatang, Yaju, Teba Chimbe Chedu Kolokor. It's like a, this pretty straightforward sentence, but like a beginner student, they find it very difficult because it's very long. Yeah. So if you want to make this sentence very simple, make phrase, I think it's important we are studying the lecture Juan. This is Tibetan grammar. Mm -hmm. so this lecture Juan telling the case by case. If you know the lecture Juan pretty well, then looking at this text, you can see this one. So then just you can pretty easy, okay, so the lots of things, not the one sentence. Sanjay Chamden there, one. One part of a Sanjay, one. Long Naju Chimba, Yebuk of Jagi Pombi Ri, Jambe Yang, Sheripu. So you can see this sort of thing, red light, everything, red lines that they make in cutting. So then you're a like, pretty good thing, right? So, and still. So you're, you're looking for words that are grammatical particles instead of, um, instead of nouns or verbs. Is exactly. that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and then if you see this thing, you just like feel, oh, just like uh, not too long, right? Okay, I can, I can figure out. Yeah. So then it's, I think student is most important thing. So I think it's like try to memorize a lot of verb. That's important. If you memorize the verb, meaning the verb, and then you know the grammar. So basically you figure lots of sentences without looking dictionary from your knowledge and guess. Mm. So like I'm seeing a verb. This is one example. So like basically saying, turn the dhamma wheel. Right, as so, a better core means basically the verb turn, turn what turn the dhamma wheel. So then, just like turn the dhamma wheel, we have a question: Who turned the dhamma wheel? Where turned the dhamma wheel? When turned the dhamma wheel? Why turned the dhamma wheel? How turned the dhamma wheel? This kind of question we came up. So in order to try to give this answer, if you know the grammar. They give an answer thing. For example, say, turn the Dhamma wheel. Who? Sanjay Chomten Te Ki. This is the agent the door. So, turn the Dhamma wheel by 
Buddha Shakyamuni. So this chi show you who drew the Dhamma wheel. Then we know, okay, so this talking about chi, uh, something ne, le, this sort of thing, we can say that, okay, this is like a door agent. So then just like a second one, where, so basically saying, one turn Dhamma wheel. Okay, in terms of one turn Dhamma wheel, there are a few different things. One thing is, if you know the number, long of you, this is 50 years, you also one clue is talking about this uh, timing one, or Jesus after, after something he turned the Dhamma wheel. After what? After 50 years. Then name is from, no part of Sanjana, and basically 50 years after Buddha achieved enlightenment. Mm -hmm. so then just we know that uh, one Buddha turned the Dhamma wheel because the one thing is like a long up to, right? Or pass, Jesu. And then just like a Mobot Masan Jene also Ne talking. This kind of give us like a time clue. Yeah. So you're saying when you have a very long sentence, first you look for what happened, then you look for who did it, then you look for when did it happen. And yeah. you find you find these small particles that give you clues to what or when or who. Exactly, yeah. So this thing. And then it's like we can go. <clears throat> so now just like a little bit longer. So okay, so this one. So now it's a question to where Buddha like did something, turned the Dhamma wheel, where, right? This is talking about La talking about location. Uh -huh. So one thing you can say, kap, So this is the one thing is that we have to know that the English giving the, I think, name of the place and Tibetan name of the place different. Mm -hmm. English start from small to big. English problem is like a, a kap, right? Opposite Tibetan from big to small. If looking for even talking about timing for a year, month and day something right so, right. English, so in english we say like in the bar core in lhasa in tibet but in tibetan you say in tibet in lhasa in the bar core exactly yeah so that's the thing one is like uh, tibetan start from big to small mm -hmm. in english lots of things like when you send the letter somebody name this from start from small to big right so that's the thing get a cup and rice gear a uh, Chaki Pumbiri and this like a Varajkar mountain. So they don't have a uh, locate in between Kevika or Chaki Pumbiri because like, uh, when you look at the Tibetan, it be like a place, very long place, or end of the uh, name of the place, give the La. Uh -huh. It didn't give in between this thing. The yeah. same timing, like uh, talking about Rabju Dumba and Durup uh, Chichi talking about end of the this, then just Nin or La. So basically, yeah. then you can tell this is time finish. So here, talking about love, even more specifically, Yekupop, Chaku Pumbi Ri, walk to, under, then to give the location, right? So that's also like talking about love, is uh, try to give the locate sign. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. And then, so basically saying, it's like, a, <clears throat> to whom? So basically saying, okay, to the Dhamma will by Buddha, after that, at their place. So now, they, if somebody turn the Dhamma, we teach the Dhamma, right? You have to have a disabled audience. So that's talking about audience, this is part two. This took it, so, Jambe Yang is like a Manjushiri, and this Tang, Sheripu, Sheripu, the last of it, et cetera, Tami Kul Jata Padme Bar. Ha, me, talking about seal, ha means more like simple in uh, Jambaya. Me is talking about Shariputra. So that's like, uh, if you're talking about meaning God and human being, you have to give a true example of a God and human. This is a different style. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's also gods all the- and, Gods and human beings such as Jambaya and Shariputra. Yes, English like opposite, right? God yeah, and yeah. Me, the hundreds and God and human beings such as Manjushir and Shariputra, right? Yeah. So that's like part of two. So basically saying like, turn the Dhamma wheel by Buddha on that time, 
at that place to this person, this audience. Yeah. So that's how we can see the our audience of like the student. And then it's like a, it's, it's this one. So sometimes Buddha give teaching the purpose. Yeah. Why? Why? I'm a will, right? So what's the purpose? Chido. Pepe Chido. For the benefit of, right? So they're saying, turn the Dhamma wheel by Buddha on that time at that place to this on this purpose. Pepe Chido, Chido Koloko. You can see Chido. Yeah. And then, so like, uh, describe the Buddha turned the what kind of Dharma he teaches. Mm. So that's a describe. So one thing is like Sabatan Gachiwa, a vast and profound, right? Mm-hmm. Mayana like Dharma, which is vast and profound. So mm-hmm. describe that Dharma and this kind of Dharma he teach. And <clears throat> So basically the thing is, this sort of thing, you want to look at it, this is like, a, after we look at the old center, this thing, Sanjay jump in there, and then it's like a different color. So that's ah. the thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. If we, like, a, number one, we memorize the lots of verb, and number two, if we start in the seven cases, like a lecture Juan, then basically is you want to look at the Tibetan text, almost all texts, you can see this different color. Uh-huh. So then you can say, okay, I can figure out this like uh, this color, this this all different section. Then without looking dictionary, you can figure out. Yeah, sometimes when I read a long sentence like that, I have colored pencils or colored highlighters, and mm-hmm. I might highlight the person, like the person who's the agent of the verb, with one color, or maybe I make the verb another color, or I have like colored pencils and I draw. I look for the ki and look for the su and the la, the chedu, and I make like a little comma or a little underline or mark around those parts of the sentence because then it breaks it breaks the sentence into smaller pieces, like you're saying. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a, a excellent method because like if you try this thing, you don't you don't feel like this is just like too much, right? Like yeah, figure out. Otherwise, like sometimes. This I text everything, copy paste in online dictionary. Then again, it's like a whatever thing type back. And so then just like problems, lot of Tibetan name has a meaning. Yeah. Right. It tried to like not as a name, try to meaning, and then try to put this meaning inside, and that's no way to figure out. It's so difficult, right? Right. So you're saying if you copy, if you're a student and you copy the whole sentence into the online dictionary, and you just get all of the words translated from top to bottom, then that's misleading and you actually waste more time because you haven't taken the time in advance to break the sentence into smaller pieces. Yeah, yeah, this thing. And also like, I know for beginning, if you do this thing, more difficult, but the things like most important thing, like we use our grammar knowledge and lots of things try to use our knowledge and guess. So knowledge and guess is really helpful so even the first time they give a wrong information, it doesn't matter. But sometimes you don't get the exact meaning, that's fine. Like for us, I'm saying, Sanjay Chomte, the who's you have no idea. Okay, teach Dhamma by someone, even though you don't know, like it must be person or must be God. Yes. Yeah. That's, understand that's more than enough, right? And then just like, even though you don't know the Jambe and the Shere Bukhut here, is you know, this is like, a, this is a student, even though this, you got the meaning. So just slowly, slowly figure out. Like right, a, and that's a very natural way of learning the language too, because when you're, when you're learning to speak or to listen, you do that, right? You're out in the world and you, some words you don't understand, so you just guess. You have to like infer the meaning based on the context. And so it's the same with reading. I guess you, you can infer the meaning or you can, you can just not know the meaning of some parts, but you know the meaning of the rest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's basically then you guessing. Okay, they must be talking about this place, right? Yeah. So like, real life is okay. This must be a place somewhere. Mm-hmm. So then just after you think and slowly, slowly, then just like a, even like a reading the book, right? Like a for some thing, you cannot look at the every word in dictionary. But yeah. also you're guessing. If you see one word akin akin so many times, then maybe one time you could look at the dictionary. Yeah, I think this is more helpful. Yeah. 
So that, and also like maybe another thing here, should you call calls like our verb end of the sentence. Sometimes verb is not end of the sentence, mm. middle of the sentence. Sometimes mm. one sentence a true or three verb. So right. this maybe we can figure out another uh, the lesson maybe. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this is a very nice sentence with perfect grammar, but sometimes you know, sometimes the grammatical particles are used differently, right? So la doesn't always mean place and su doesn't always mean, you know, the object. So there are many, so sometimes it's confusing and sometimes the verb doesn't require the key, the agent of the verb and there's no key. So, you know, this is, it works in this kind of perfect sentence, but sometimes the sentence is missing some grammar or the grammar is used a little differently. So then it's harder. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. So that's a one like a first, try to translate first, you try to find the, it's like, I think it's the oldest old student, when you translate the text first, try to find the scholar's text. Because yeah. Tibet, we have a scholar and practitioner. Scholar is like really follow the strict grammar. Mm. And practitioner is not that much follow the grammar, a lot of things, his own prevision, whatever can he see, right? That's mm. till it, so they also sometimes put lots of local dialogue mm -hmm. and also like uh, not really strictly follow the grammar. So right, that's, uh, yeah, right. So I it's easier to that. learn with some very um, scholarly text that has more classical grammar. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. Can but you give some examples of some good um, classical uh, texts or some authors that are sort of good for beginning intermediate readers to practice with? So like, I think like in terms of like uh, some uh, Jiren Buji text, also some clear writing. And uh -huh. I have us like Sajid uh, Bendita Karamba. And then just like Goji is also like a Sudu Benjin. And this sort of thing, yeah, as like a writing is really clearly, so you can see the old grammar. Uh -huh. But, but sometimes it's like because of like a, for native dependent speaker, something pretty obvious. So like for English, let's go. They don't have a you, right? Like we, whatever, let's go. We know, like talking a person. Yeah. So that's like the intermediate, sometimes we're using. But the, the scholar basically thing put almost every like grammar thing. So that's why like, uh, I would say first, you just wanted to study a translation, try to follow the, the scholar text. Then mm -hmm. after that, you figure out, then just the you different thing. And also like when first try to translate the text, something subject, you know, that's very important. Yeah. Yeah, if you're familiar with the subject, and then just like a lot of things, you can use your background knowledge. It right. just makes sense, right? Like for us, when we're watching the English thing, something talking about religion, lots of I can guessing. And talking about medical or science, something, but I can't use to guess that much. I don't have a background knowledge. Right, right. Yeah, that's also very important, yeah. To yeah. Text, yeah. Great. Thank you so much. This is very helpful. Thanks, yeah. <laughs>